Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning I bid to all of you. I'd like to start by introducing myself. I am Amira Arisha binti Muhammad Nasri, a student under supervision of Assistant Professor Dr. Izawati Tukiman and Assistant Professor Dr. Zainul Mukrim. Today, I am going to explain about my design thesis topic and the focus of my presentation is site inventory, analysis and synthesis. To start with, I'd like to explain on site background and selection of topic. KL Central is an exclusive urban center that is located at the nucleus of Kuala Lumpur. These 72 acres of land offers global connectivity with various activities. What is very significant about this site is its strategic location. However, the site facing several issues which are wear and tear, visual character, and walkability. In the light of the issues, I propose a topic of Instagrammable transit of KL Central. Therefore, the aim of the design is enhancing KL Central as the state-of-the-art transportation hub. To achieve this, I came up with three objectives which are first, to provide modern and interactive urban design, second, to showcase liveliness of the area with art-driven design, and lastly, to create an environmental art setting in the area by integrating natural and urban art. Now that we have seen the site background and its issue, let us turn to site inventory and analysis. I've divided the site inventory analysis into eight elements, which are the existing structure, land use, visual and senses, circulation, climate, vegetation, and hydrology. First, the existing structures are divided into two, which are micro and macro. Existing structures in macro scale have outstanding features and can be recognized immediately by the locals and foreigners. This includes Perdana Botanica Garden, National Museum, Menara Kembaban Rakyat, and Little India Market District. On the other hand, existing structure in micro scale is within KL Central. Let's take a look at the panoramic view I've provided here. These are some of the examples of the existing structures within KL Central. All of the structures mentioned before have numerous of strengths. Therefore, I came up with legibility analysis with strengths and weaknesses. As for strength, it is a place for people where it is easily accessible. It has visual appropriateness where they have similar building structure with one another. And it is also permeable where it is still within walking distance. The weakness includes building design that doesn't engage with people and lack of local historical social cultural relation. Next, there are various types of facilities and utilities provided at the area. As you can see in the provided map, the facilities are still within walking distance. It supports diversity and social interaction to some part of the area. However, not all area is provided with a proper pedestrian walkway and universal design. This same goes to cultural services that are so really separated with brick fields. This has caused the area to be culturally irresponsive. Therefore, I came up with variety analysis where the activities in KL Central have separated the involvement of public as compared to brick fields. Circulation is divided into two, which are vehicular circulation and pedestrian movement. As for vehicular circulation, KL Central can be accessed easily as it is connected with major roads and highways. Although the traffic control security is always on site to avoid vehicular users park their cars along the curbs, it is not able to solve the overall traffic congestion. This is where public transportation system is introduced where users and visitors are encouraged to walk. The bus station are provided outside KL Central area to reduce this traffic congestion. As for pedestrian movement, it is divided into three which are resident route, workers route and tourist route. All these routes are still in walkable distance where the furthest building not exceed 400 meters and 5 minutes of walking. However, there are some weaknesses of pedestrian movement including the disconnection of tactile path for visually impaired users, narrow pedestrian path, no safety design, disconnection of sheltered walkway and the privatized route. I hope you are still with me as I'm going to continue with visual appropriateness based on land use of KL Central. KL Central has various types of land uses including residential, commercial, open spaces, utilities and others. This has created a visual appropriateness to KL Central Station as it is sheltered from direct sunlight. However, because of these various land uses, the area is polluted with air pollution, human noise and traffic noise, especially at the entrances. Based on research done in 2012, users are not really satisfied with the overall design of KL Central and the quality of air at the area. Moving on to natural attributes, the first element is climatic factors. As Kuala Lumpur is close to the equator, the climate has influenced an ample rain and warm temperature throughout the year. 
The average temperature of Kuala Lumpur in 2009 to 2020 is 30 degrees Celsius with 10 km per hour wind speed. The maximum rainfall of Kuala Lumpur throughout the year is 400 mm with average 75% of humidity. At some point, Kuala Lumpur is visible from 9 km to 12 km from far. Overall, KL Central has minimum chances to get flash flood as it is located higher than breakfast area. Next, the soft skip elements in KL Central are mainly act as a barrier, hedges, and increase aesthetic value. Most of the vegetation are from palm species as it requires less watering and easier to maintain. However, it is suggested that the area needs more greeneries especially along the roads to reduce air and noise pollution. Some of the potential use of the vegetation are as a microclimate enhancement, air filtration and purification, noise pollution reduction, and architectural uses. As the soil in KL Central consists of seed soil, it is good for growing crops as it is more fertile. Last but not least, there are two main water catchment areas for KL Central which are Kolam Takungan Banjir Jalan Traverse and Clown River. Kolam Takungan Banjir is a dry water catchment that is not as big as Clown River. However, Clown River is more polluted because of deep siltation caused by human waste from informal settlers of the river bank. Based on these findings, I came up with layering map with cross analysis table that further describe the interrelation of each element. Overall, there are six main design potential based on the challenges and weaknesses mentioned before. First, as in line with design aim, it is suggested to have art driven design to the area. This is to ensure that visual appreciation by the user is increased through installation of art driven design. The examples are to have a vibrant urban, set, urban design setting that are not only provide more seating area but to provide a visually attractive design that can be appreciated by the pedestrian and vehicular users from afar. Second, to introduce more social friendly design. This is to ensure that the area is culturally responsive and engaged with the settlement in brickfields, thus creating a new social cultural nodes. Some of the examples to create more diverse and robust nodes are by creating a setting that have the sense of belonging to the area, whether reflecting Indian culture from Brickfields or Malaysian identity. Third, to create more accessible and continuous pedestrian walkway that infused with art-driven design. As you can see in the before image, there is discontinuity of pedestrian walkway that makes people discouraged to travel from one place to another. Some examples to make a continuous pedestrian walkway is by make it sheltered against heavy rain and direct sun and widen the path. It is also suggested to reinforce linear movement by having a strong vertical and horizontal vegetation along the road. Next, it is suggested to have a natural buffer that acts as air filtration and purification. Some of the approaches are to have dense vegetation especially at congested areas to reduce airborne particulate matter and thus reduce the pollution. Other than that, the area should introduce vegetation with broader leaves to trap pollution that will be washed off to the ground while raining. It is also suggested to have vegetation that can modify ground plane, vertical plane and overhead plane. This type of special planting design can dramatize certain view and alter user's perception of the area. Fifth, universal design needs to be added to the surrounding so that it can assist wayfinding especially for PWDs. Some of the examples are to have a colored floor tiles that indicates the way to certain area. As for visually impaired users, the approaches including having a continuous tactile path or fragrant vegetation along the path to assist wayfinding. Lastly, to create more sustainable design to existing structures. These can be applied based on nearby development that have already implemented sustainable design approaches to its building. This includes having a green roof or little fight garden wall that require less maintenance. To sum up, these six main design potentials need to have a natural art urban design. That concludes my overall presentation. Thank you for your attention.